The producer who did almost everything Elton John did in the 70s was Gus Dudgeon. We lost him a few years ago. He got into a car accident, and both he and his wife were killed. He produced David Bowie, one of my favorite early 70s bands, Audience, but most notably, of course, Elton John, almost all his Elton John stuff. Like, let's say, Richard Perry was a stickler. He might have you do 900 takes or something, okay, I'm exaggerating, of one particular thing. And he was hyper-focused on drums a lot. Nigel Olsen must have really liked that, Elton John's drummer. Gus Dutton could also drive the people in the studio a little nuts. Stuart Epps, who engineered for Gus Dutton on rock history music. The other engineer at the mill is called Phil Dunn, who, who mixed all the early albums, Elton albums, with Gus. And, uh, but he was always getting himself into trouble so as soon as he was out of the engineer's chair, I was in that chair uh, working with Gus, who I totally adored and looked up to. I mean, he's like the king. So to sit, although I'd, I'd, I'd engineered and I'd produced even, Gus is the king of producers. So to sit in the chair next to him and then to actually be engineering stuff that he produced was just, couldn't get better than that, you know. I remember, I remember the day I heard about the accident with he and his wife. And I remember going, oh, I was, you know, you, yourself as a broadcaster, I, I end up being selfish sometimes of going, oh, I, w I wanted to talk to Gus Dudgeon, you know, and I, Paul Buckmaster was the same thing. Oh, I never got a chance to talk to Paul Buckmaster, but, but he was one of those yeah, producers cool. in the seventies where he's like Phil Ramone and uh, where you got to, you know, George Martin, obviously the ultimate example of of producers that everyone who knew music would know you know well that's another name another name i can do several hours on of course because uh you know i knew gus right from when he first started with elton how he got to work with elton and then through all those early albums um so that's what i mean so by the time he built the mill and i went to work for gus i was already obviously a massive fan we were great mates um it wasn't all it wasn't all plain sailing though because uh i don't even know where to start i mean elton uh, just a total perfectionist that could could make you want to kill yourself if you happen to be having to work with him you see i mean you know i've got all sorts of stories tons of stories he, he could spend two weeks getting the sound of a creaky door for a track, you know, and and getting, well, you'd, all right, so we'll home in on drums because you're a drummer, right? So Gus was totally fastidious about every instrument, but drums, because there's so much you can do, so it was not unknown for him to spend days, you know, getting a drum sound. And when we started at the mill, that's exactly what he would do, especially if it was a young band, you know, you wouldn't have to do much with the David Mattox. He comes in with the sound, you know, and, and the way he plays it creates the sound. All you got to do is mic it up properly, you know. But some of these new bands like Voyager that we were working with, and Voyager is a good example. Um, the drummer came in with a kit he mainly uses for live, and and it and it was pretty awful. You put a mic on it, poing, you know, it's got boings all over it, so. You know, and Gus would just, he would not take any, he, he's got to get the sound that he's got to get. So, and in the case of this Voyager thing, well, I always tell the story is that he spent hours and hours, this guy hitting a drum, hit the drum, that drum's no good, get another drum, bang, bang, bang. So to cut a long story short, by the time Gus said to this guy, right, we've got the sound, we can start. The guy said, well, I'm going to have to go home. Sorry, I can't hit any more drums. And he, they had to get a new drummer in. He was drummed so, out. Yeah, he was totally drummed out. He thought he he thought I can't. I'm not going to be able to handle this. He, he I'm not going to be able to because Gus was a force to deal with. You see, as a musician, he was a force to deal with, and you had to be at the top of your game. It's no good you being like half. You can't. You can sort of play in time, or you can kind of do a drum fill, or you can sort of tune your guitar. You, you've got to be at the top of your game, you know. And and even when I was doing backing vocals, sometimes I, I think, I'm going to die. You know, he's making me do it again. He's making me do it again and again and again. And and Gus would push you to the limit, to beyond the limits that you thought you could reach, you see. Were you there That's when he worked with Audience? 
No, no, no. That was, um, I guess that was before Elton audience. I only met Elton when, uh, I only met Gus when he started, you know, he also worked with the Bonzo Dog Doodah band. And I think audience. That, that singer, I forget his name. That guy, uh, uh, I think it was David Henschel who told me, he says, that guy used to blow mics. <laughs> Blow Mike. See, like he, his voice was so powerful. Oh, I see. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know the band, of course, and I know Gus worked with audience, but I can't place uh, who the singer was or what era that was. Of course, Gus did other projects, you know, um, and he was doing other projects when I knew him. But obviously, when he came to the mill, then we would do it when he built the mill. Then I was doing it, all the projects that he was involved in at that time. We'll have more from Stuart Epps coming up the next few days. Remember, he produced so many people, engineered a lot of people. He was the engineer on the Coda album with Jimmy Page. Worked with The Firm, Twisted Sister, Elton John, Paul Rogers, Jimmy Page, and a host of others. If you want to get produced by him, he is available. Go to his website, stuartepps.co.uk. Remember, subscribe to our channel. We always love it when you join our team, like our videos, spread the word, spread the videos on social media, and comment on them as well. I'm John Bowden. This is Rock History Music.